Distinguished guests, the 2023 NCAA Division I Women's Basketball National Champions, LSU Tigers. President of the United States and Dr. Jill Biden, accompanied by the Vice President of the United States and Coach Kim Mulkey. Everyone, go ahead and sit down. <laughs> I'm so proud to welcome the 2023 NCAA champions, the LSU Tigers, to the White House. In this room, I see the absolute best of the best. Jasmine Carson, who led the team with 22 points, going seven for seven in the first half. Angel Reese, 
Rice, who broke the NCAA record for double doubles in a season. <laughs> Alexis Morris, who led with nine assists. <laughs> All of you who work together as one, scoring the most points ever in a women's title game. <laughs> Watching you was pure magic. The way you passed like you could read each other's thoughts. The air crackling with the electricity of that action. The crowd seemed to breathe with one breath. Our hearts racing to the rhythm of each thump of the ball. Every basket was pure joy. And I kept thinking about how far women's sports have come. I grew up before Title IX, and young women in my day just didn't have the same opportunities to play sports. I see a lot of head shaking. Over the years, we've seen the push and pull of progress, including in women's basketball, the attempts to create women's leagues, the 1996 Olympic team, the WNBA, and this year, when almost 10 million people watch your final, shattering records. <laughs> We've made so much progress, and we still have more work to do. Your game was everything I love about sports. A team at the top of its game, refusing to let anything stand in your way. As I watched, I felt the history of that moment of for you who dared to be fast and furious, who ignored the critics and just played. I thought about every little girl who will come after, how you showed them that they belong on the court that they can be strong and tough, that they can fail and fall down, take risks and run until their legs feel like they will give out, then run some more, that they can win. You didn't just play basketball. You didn't just make history. You showed us, girls and boys, women and men, what it means to be a champion. You, yes. You gave us hope and joy, a way to find that fire in ourselves, and most of all, the chance to see you soar. Thank you for giving us those gifts. And congratulations once again to the LSU Tigers. <laughs> and now it's my pleasure to introduce another incredible, inspiring woman, our amazing Vice President, Kamala Harris. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and good afternoon to these extraordinary leaders. Uh, thank you, Dr. Biden, for that introduction and for your advocacy, always. I watch you when the cameras are on and when they are off, and you are always fighting for the equality of women in every sector, in sports, in pay, and beyond. Thank you for your leadership. And thank you, of course, to our president, Joe Biden, to the second gentleman, and to all the distinguished guests who are here. And welcome to a group that defines excellence in every way, truly excellence. Coach Kim, thank you for your extraordinary leadership. We had a, a moment to talk about your seasons of winning in terms of being a coach and inspiring the young women of America. Thank you for the work that you do.
And to the winners of this year's NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament, the LSU Tigers, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. So a few months ago, I had the chance to meet Alexis and Angel and Flaugé, and I was so impressed by their poise, by their strength, by their intelligence, and by their love for each other. And I understood immediately when I first met them how you all took home the trophy. Because you are not just a team, you are a family. You support each other on and off the court. You represent your teammates, your school, and your community with dignity and with grace at every step. Throughout your record-baking season, you showed the world who you are. You are leaders, you are role models, and of course, you are champions. Tigers, we know, through your grit, determination, and brilliance, you changed the game. When you take the court, you inspire so many people across our country. And as we talked about earlier, you are inspiring people that you may never meet, but through your excellence and your enthusiasm, you are lifting up whole communities, people around our country. And not only because of how you play, but because of who you each are. You remind all of us of what we can achieve when we work hard and strive with ambition. For all of us, from the youngest to the eldest, <laughs> from the mouths of babes, I congratulate the Tigers. And now it is my great honor to introduce a leader who also knows a thing or two about winning, our president the United, of the United States, Joe Biden. Thank you. Please, Judy. This is getting old hat for the coach. <laughs> She's been here with 19 presidents. <laughs> All championship teams. But I think this may be her, uh, her best moment in terms of the team she's with. Folks, uh, thank Kamala, Kamala and Jill. And, uh, and you just described how inspiring this team is. And we, uh, we, uh, we were joined by many, many fans all across the country. And by the way, it seems to me half the folks in this room are from Louisiana. I want to welcome back President Tate. The last time we were in the White House, we talked about the leadership guiding the university through the pandemic. This time, we're celebrating the champions that have captivated the nation with their talent and their heart and their grit. You know, uh, we're joined by members of the Louisiana delegation, Troy Carter, Garrett Graves, Mike Johnson, and uh, a lot of alumni, too. We have a proud alumni of Louisiana State here in my cabinet. Thomas Greenfield, stand up. Yeah. Class of 2004. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right. She brought, she brought, she's brought global, uh, global leaders together. Uh, you know how she does it? She's up in the United States. By the way, she's a major, major player in this administration. And I wonder how she getting all these folks up in, uh, up in the, uh, you know, the United Nations. She uh, gives them, she takes them to her kitchen. No, 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 no. To get to know each other, she calls it the gumbo diplomacy. <laughs> oh, it's not, not a joke. Director managing the budget. Shalonda Young. Where's Shalonda? There you go. Shalonda here, director of the budget, putting together a deal, hopefully. <laughs> she grew up in Baton Rouge, in Clinton, Louisiana and is now helping lead the critical budget talks for in the middle of now. But she said, I'm not, I'm leaving the talks to be here. <laughs> and 
we're all here to celebrate a remarkable group of student athletes. Uh, you know, uh, Angel, Alexis, Jasmine, Foje, uh, you know, the entire team. You're, it's less than a year ago, uh, you'd, uh, you'd never even played together. And Coach, uh, like I said, uh, you're Hall of Fame, man. I'll tell you. <laughs> It's, uh, I, I, isn't this getting old for you, winning all this time? <laughs> the Hall of Fame championship coach had a vision. Nine new players joined into one power team. They started the season five straight 100-point games. Continued into the record 23-0 and zero run. Rolled through the regular season with the best in the nearly 20 years. And under the big one of the most exciting final fours ever. Winning LSU's first national championship basketball title. Angela Reese, uh, excuse me, Angel, you, uh, you named the most outstanding player. It wasn't any reason. It didn't surprise me. Uh, <laughs> demand for tickets so high, you, 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 caught, you, know, you made it more expensive for people to come. <laughs> you know I mean? The cost of tickets went up 10 times, 10 times, and uh, more than the men's games. <laughs> The final was the most viewed game in the history of women's basketball. More viewers than the, than the NBA playoffs. And folks, we witnessed history. And here's what else we saw. Parents and children who watched every single one of your games together, sometimes driving 10 hours just to see you play. And then, and then we've seen you take the time to talk to them, to laugh with them, to show millions of our daughters they can do anything as well. Anything. You know, in this team, we saw hope. We saw pride, and we saw purpose. It matters. You know, it's been 51 years since the past time, guaranteeing all women and girls equal rights to participate, not only in sports, but in any school program. Today, 58 percent, and this, uh, my colleagues don't like me always mention this, but 58 percent of all college students are women, up from 42 percent. Not athletes in college are women about 10 times more female athletes in college and high school than there were. Millions more women are getting sports scholarships and a chance not just to play, but to earn degrees and build their lives. But there's, uh, there's more progress to make. In the media, 95% of sports stories are still about men. It's not an issue, though, <laughs> not with this team. <laughs> Folks, we need to support women's sports, not just during the championship runs, but the entire year and every season showing up in person, watching on television, creating more programming and sponsor and scholarships and sponsorships and opportunities for millions of women and girls to realize their dreams and know they can do literally anything at all. You know, I always tell our daughters, our granddaughters, they can do anything at all. Anything any man can do. America's all about possibilities. That's what this team is about. Incredible athletes redefining what's possible. And one more thing, we're hosting the UConn's men's basketball team later today, and uh, they're the men's champs. <laughs> Folks, it's okay. We're getting. Some water. Here's some water. Here's some water. Sorry. It's a lot of standing, I apologize.
It's okay. It's, it's happened lots of times. It's, like I said, this is not the first time it's happened. Uh, not to her, but to uh, any, a lot of folks standing up on this stage. Folks, uh, the, uh, I, I know uh, it's time to move on, but uh, the one thing uh, I understand, I started to say, later this afternoon, I'm going to be with the Connecticut team, the men's team. And... Um, your cousin wants to have a one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> I'm putting my money on you, kid. Okay. <laughs> you, you know that she she got a she got a, a, a cousin starts on another team. I think what's his name Hawkins something like Jordan. that. Jordan, I think maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got we got we got a bet going in our inside there. So, we there's a basketball court down below. Uh, <laughs> you think I'm joking? So we're gonna work something out here, right? Yeah. One-on-one. -on -one. I have angels. Yeah, I got Angel, too. <laughs> and besides, I got Secret Service to make sure Angel's going to win. <laughs> I tell you what, I, between a, a brother and a sister having two stars on championship ball clubs the same year, it ain't bad, but they're all around the Baltimore area, right? Yeah, that's my family. All my family's from Baltimore. Baltimore, as they say. At any rate, um, thank you all again for your, for your patience for being here. Look, um, there's an awful lot, an awful lot to be proud of. And, uh, and the way in which women's sports has come along is just incredible. And you're, and you're changing the name, and it's not just in sports, it's across the board in every single thing. And uh, it's really neat to see since uh, I've got uh, four granddaughters we, we had some pretty good athletes. I wasn't a bad athlete. My brothers weren't, but all the real athletes in this family are women. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you, you got it. You got it. At any rate, so thank you all for being here. I'm going to turn it over to you, and, uh, and I, again, want to congratulate you. I assume uh, 
I'll be seeing you next year and next year. And by the way, that doesn't even count the new fashion line she's going to come out with. <laughs> You might want to use that. Do I have to? No. <laughs> no. You can use this if you want. It doesn't matter. You, want. <laughs> you can leave if you want. Anyone well, as you, as, as you can see, we leave our mark where we go. Samaya <laughs> planned that. No, Samaya's fine. For those of you who are concerned, Samaya is fine. I'll assure you of that. She's kind of right now embarrassed. She doesn't want to leave. She wants to be with us, but uh, she needs to be checked out. I would like to thank you. President Biden, Vice President Harris. Um, I don't want to get emotional here, but we are a proud state. I came back to the state of Louisiana to be a positive. Little did I know that I would get to coach this group of people. They came to our state, and you are looking at the finest our state has to offer. We have parents, I don't think I've ever come where the parents were allowed to come. That touches my heart. We have my grandchildren, my family, we have coaches, families, we have administrators here. As I said, we're very, very proud. I would like for Angel Reese, I would like for Emily Ward, our co-captains, to present to you and your better half, Dr. Jill Biden, a token of our appreciation. By the way, one thing about Louisiana is dangerous. You know why? Our daughter was going to go to school where her brothers went to school, but she decided to go to Tulane. <laughs> and I was worried. And, and she, that guy down there, Landrew, the former mayor? Uh, I know a thing or two about his father, Moon. I know, too. And his father, Moon, is a hell of a guy and took care of my daughter. But I was worried she's come home with some boy from Bio Lafouche or something, you know? Yes. Uh, I was talking funny. I couldn't understand. You know what I mean? We still speak the French language, but that part of Louisiana hasn't washed away yet. I know. Well, none of it's going to wash away. And besides, uh, it's an incredible, incredible state. But anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. We are honored. Distinguished guests, please remain in the East Room as the principals depart.